topic is, can you recover from grief? You know, I used to think no. I was taught that you will have grief forever. And while it's true, there will be part of you that always misses the person. I don't think you have to live in that deep grief forever. I know you don't. I know that you can have life and live life abundantly. John 10, 10 says we were, uh, I probably am quoting a little bit wrong, but um, we were created to have life and live life abundantly. And that's, that's what I want for all of us that we're not just stuck in this place. Like I'm so sad. My spouse died. I'm just waiting it out till I go to heaven and join them. That's how I felt in the beginning, but now I feel like I want to do something with my life. I want my life to matter. So I actually have, if you are watching this on YouTube, you'll see this. Um, and if you're on the podcast, I will put a link to the YouTube so that you can watch it. I have a little PowerPoint I'm going to bring up about can you recover from grief? So let me go ahead and share my screen. Let me get back to the Zoom and be patient with me as I am doing this. And if you're listening on the pad podcast, just be patient. Just imagine I'm sharing my screen. <laughs> Um, anyways, um, uh, hold on. Okay, here we are. So this is a picture. If you can see this, it's a picture of, um, Luke and my kids and myself at an Oregon duck. Um, what's it called? Football game. That was like his favorite. Right. And it was just a special day. And so I just put it as the, the picture um, so I'm going to give you the very, very, very brief version, because if you are on my podcast, you probably know my whole story. So I'm going to give you like the cliff, 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 cliff notes. If you want to know my whole story, go back to episode two and it goes in detail. Um, plus if you've been a listener, this is episode 76, you have probably heard lots of it. So my husband, Luke was diagnosed with cancer at age 26, very rare bone cancer. He was healthy. He'd been like an athlete. He was all stars. He was like amazing with everything he did. Never been sick in his life, except for like ear infections when he was a baby diagnosed with cancer. They didn't know how to treat it. We were devastated. We had just gotten married and, um, they ended up, he did chemo that didn't work. They amputated his leg and his whole life changed because of that. Um, he was cancer free for 13 years. He had lots of other issues in the meantime and wasn't able to work. He was on disability that entire time. Um, and then he fell and anyways, through a series of events, they scanned his lungs and saw that there were spots on his lungs and that it was terminal and there was nothing they could do. So we went through like, I think it was two and a half to three years of treatments. He did go back to chemo. It was much harder this time because we had our three kids. Long story short, May 23rd, 2020, which when you're watching this, if you're watching it on the day it comes out, it's exactly three years. He moved to heaven and, um, it was quite a journey, you know, those first few months as a widow were almost impossible. If you're a new widow, listen, it's going to get better. If you take steps towards recovery, I used to always just say it will get better and it will, but you have to take some steps. Like it's like, if you get, um, your tire gets a flat tire and you just sit there and think, oh, it's going to get better. It won't like you have to do something. And just the fact that you're either watching this or listening to this means that you want it to get better. So let's look first, as we're talking about, can you recover from grief? Let's define what is grief. Grief is the normal and natural reaction to change or loss of any kind. Grief is the response to a change in or end of any familiar pattern of behavior. Listen, any familiar pattern of behavior. And that's why our kids can be grieving. Um, that's why kids even grieve at the end of the school year. I mean, some of them are happy, but like, oh, a pattern changed. They can grieve at the end of summer, pattern changed. They move, pattern changed. Like anything, even like from being in the womb to being born, there's grief. Like really, because we're not in the same safe, warm environment that we were in. And so that is grief. So how many people are grievers? 100%, 100%. Grief is also about mixed emotions, graduations, moves, births, loss of addictions, even death. There's all kinds. So here's a great definition too. And this is all from the Grief Recovery Institute. What is grief? The feeling of reaching out for someone who's always been there for you, only to find that when you need them one more time, they're not there. Whoa. When I first heard that, I was like, Bing, bingo, that's it. Let me say it again. The feeling of reaching out for someone who's always been there 
for you, only to find that when you need them one more time, they're not there. Or reaching out for someone who's never been there for you, only to find that when you need them one more time, they're still not there. So what causes grief? We go through life picking up rocks. So imagine this, you're born, there's a backpack put on your back, right? Every time that you have grief or loss, there's another rock put in the backpack. It begins in childhood. So let's say your best friend moves. That's the, that's the clunk of the rock. There's a rock. Um, you move. There's a rock. Parents get divorced. Ooh, that's a boulder. Okay. Uh, you're a teenager. First love, heartbroken. It didn't work out. Boom, boom. Who had those? I had a lot of those. A lot of heartbreak from... Yeah, all that stuff. Um, we get more and more as we age. We um, we get married. Things don't work like like we wanted them to. Or are we lose a job? We lose a friend. We lose this. Boom, 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 boom. Rock after rock after rock until one day we can't even get up anymore. Especially if you're here, you've probably lost a spouse. So you've got a big boulder. Okay, so our rocks can include all kinds of things, pets, moves, abuse, divorces, deaths, graduation, job loss, loss of addiction, loss of things, blah, 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 on and on and on and on and on. Anytime the change, remember that definition? So anytime the change in pattern is happening, you can be experiencing these things. Oops. Okay. So what else is causing, what else causes grief? So what we have in grief recovery, what we call intangible losses. They could be loss of safety, loss of security, loss of trust, respect, faith, expectations, dreams, all kinds of things. So sometimes they are things that you can't see. It could be over time you've lost trust in a lot of people and that can cause grief too. So what causes your grief listener? Maybe it's the things you see in here. Um, all the do, doing all the right things and not succeeding your mission. Sometimes you just can't. Sometimes you just wake up and you feel grief, but most likely if you are here or listening to widow too soon, it's probably the loss of your spouse. That's causing you the biggest. And it's not only the loss of your spouse, it's the secondary losses. It's the loss of like, I don't even grocery shop the same way. I don't watch TV the same way. I don't do anything the same way. Right. When you lose a spouse, it changes everything. So grief is so misunderstood, okay? We are not taught, especially in the U.S., I can't speak to everywhere, but in the U.S., we are not taught how to deal with this. There's way more education on first aid than there is on grief recovery, which I'm glad there's first aid education, but I'm just saying it's not known. So here are some myths. We call them the big six myths in grief recovery. Don't feel bad. Replace the loss. Grieve alone. Be strong. Keep busy. Just take time or time heals all wounds. Well, it's not even true. Like, let me just pick a couple of these. Be strong. You know, we're taught that and to grieve alone, but actually we need to grieve in community. Keep busy. When you keep busy, you're just avoiding the feelings that you need to deal with. There's in, in uh, grief recovery, we really go into depth about these. We also have what we call STURBS, short-term energy-relieving behavior. So this is anything that takes your mind away from the grief and the feelings and kind of numbs you. So just here's, here's a few things, food, alcohol, shopping, violence, exercise, sleep, video games, um, binge watching shows, like there's so many things. It's anything that, you know, there's a balance. We talked about this in one of our recent episodes. There's a balance of having things to occupy your mind and that's okay. But if it's like completely taking you away and you never deal with it. So it's one thing if you deal with your grief and then you do some of these things, you know, within moderation, like as far as things that don't harm you, like watching some shows you like, um, exercising, things like that, they can be good, but it's in excess when they're not. And when it's taking you away from dealing with your pain. So why is grief so misunderstand? Um, because oftentimes raise your hand if you're guilty, me. We say, I'm fine. What does fine really mean? Feelings inside, not expressed. I'm going to say that again. Feelings inside, not expressed. 
And so we're keeping these feelings inside and we're not really expressing them. Suck it up. Don't be a sissy. Don't cry. Or I'll give you something to cry about. Pull up your big girl panties on and on. Those are things we might've heard growing up. And it's not true. We actually need to feel and kids are like sponges. They learn from us. So if you see your children doing some of the behaviors, just look at yourself. They may, I'm not saying there always are, they may be copying what you're doing. If they don't ever express their grief, it could be, no, it's not always. It could be that you don't express your grief. Could be. Um, so this just talks about when kids are little, everything is fine, but when they get older, we kind of lose that. And, um, we just say we're fine even when we're not. So the sources of our grief, we talked about this, it's all the rocks being placed in our backpack. I think that's the biggest thing I want you to get understand today, besides that you can recover. It's all connected that there are rocks in your backpack. Just imagine it. And what we actually do in re grief recovery, we actually talk about every loss you've ever had. And then we start unpacking them. It starts with your biggest one, and then you have the tools to work on your other ones. So how do we relieve grief? If you're sitting here today listening. I'm sure you have grief. Recovery comes by learning to make a series of small, positive changes on our attitudes and then our behaviors. It's one thing at a time. And so in grief recovery, we're actually taking the time to figure out what's the biggest loss that's ever occurred in your life. Okay, boom. Now let's take that loss and let's dissect it. Let's talk about the good. Let's talk about the bad. And let's Let's get some completion in your grief. A lot of grief is because we have incomplete things. We never got to say what we wanted to say. We never got to do what we wanted to do. So in grief recovery, we actually do things. It means getting better, not healed. It's an ongoing process. Yes, we can recover from grief, um, but it's not like poof, you're never going to hurt again. It comes sooner with positive actions. So this is something I didn't understand early in my grief. Um, when I was telling everybody, like after a year, it's going to get better. It's going to get better because for me it was, but I also was hearing from people who five years later were not any better. And I realized it wasn't just the time. It's what you do with the time, you know, taking grief classes, getting help, surrounding yourself with positive people who can lift you up surrounding yourself with people who also get it. That's been one of my biggest helps. Like two of my best friends, they were both in my weddings, Stacy and Jess, they are also widows. And that was huge for me having other widows to get it. Um, it comes sooner with, this is what I was just saying with appropriate support, getting into some kind of grief support thing. Um, I have my grief recovery groups. I'd love to have you part of their grief share at church, like get involved in a group where you're going to get support. You can also find our widow too soon page that has tons of free support. Just look up widow too soon on Facebook and you'll find us and on Instagram. Um, so here's more ways to relieve the grief we carry validate and acknowledge the grief and trauma. Avoid the myth statements that say, I can't imagine. Actually, Mark and I say that a lot on the podcast. Like, I can only imagine. Like, don't say that to people. Identify and name the loss. Help name the feelings. That's something we do in grief recovery too. It's like, okay, this is how I felt. I actually take out a thesaurus. I just had to say that again. Like Mark and I used to joke about thesaurus. If you don't know, you don't know. And this isn't funny. But um, if you do know, it's kind of funny. Um, take out a thesaurus. And look up the word sad and think of other words that mean the same thing. So we're actually like giving feelings to everything we felt during this relationship. We give them a voice. We give you a safe place to share what you're feeling in 100% confidentiality. And we give you the tools to move forward. And we help you identify things that lead to stirps. Remember, those were the short-term energy relieving behaviors. So I'm going to tell you more specifically about the grief recovery method. You've probably heard it like on epi every episode. I have a little ad for it. I'm not just saying this because it's like, I'm trying to promote this thing, but I'm saying this because I have watched it helped person after person become free. They have literally said to me, I feel lighter. This is working. And that's because it's not just sharing in a group, how you're feeling like I in the grief recovery method, we actually give you tools to help you move forward. We learn in three ways, seeing, hearing, and doing. Um, storytelling helps, gives voice to undelivered communication. We have an action-based 
program. So it's not just, I'm going to go to this group and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to just be in my little bubble and all that stuff. Yeah, that's easier, but I don't need easy. I just need possible to quote Bethany Hamilton, one of my favorite quotes. Um, it's not about being easy. It's about doing the work so that you can recover something specifically about grief recovery method. We are in, we've been around for 40 years, six continents and it's evidence-based. They actually, um, did some scientific testing at Kent state university and found that this is the only evidence-based program that we actually can recover from grief. So how might you get involved in this? So think about what are your top health and wellness priority? How do they fit in with what you've learned about grief today? Like, do you want to feel better? This does affect grief, not only affects how you feel emotionally, spiritually, but it really does affect how you feel physically. Um, so it's time, it's time to take a step. It's time to get this rock, get this boulder out of your backpack and start recovering from grief. And so if nothing else, and this is, I do not get paid anything for this. If nothing else, go to Amazon and buy this book, The Grief Recovery Handbook. It's a purple book by John W. James and Russell Friedman. If you can't do anything else, at least get yourself the book and it's going to help you and read the book. But if you want to take it a step further, I would love to help you with going through this either one-on-one -on -one or in a group. If you're in person, if you live in the Vancouver, Portland area, I do in-person groups. If you um, want one-on-one, -on -one, I do one-on-one -on -one Zoom groups or in-person. And if you want to be part of a group, but do it online, I do group Zooms. And so I would love to talk to you. There's a link in the show notes um, or right below here on YouTube where you can set up um, a 20 minute appointment to talk to me and we can talk about what are your goals what are your, um, like financially, how could this work for you? We do have scholarships available for widows. I'm so happy about that. Thanks to widow goals, my nonprofit and the people who have generously contributed. We do have scholarships, um, to make it possible for everybody. I don't want money to be an obstacle. If you want to be here, if you want to recover for your grief, please make an appointment. Let's talk about it. And we will find a way to make it work. I have worked with all kinds of people in all kinds of financial situations, and I just really want you to recover from grief. So to answer the podcast question, can we recover from grief? Yes. A resounding yes. You don't have to live in this place forever. And if you want, if you don't feel comfortable setting up a call, you could email me grief recovery with Michelle at gmail.com grief recovery with Michelle at gmail.com. And I would be happy to email with you if you, um, want to just talk to me, go to that Calendly link. We can set up a call. I look forward to talking to you. I look forward to helping you recover from grief to get that boulder out. And we take action steps. And I wouldn't be saying this because I really love all of our audience. And if I did not believe in this 1 million percent, and seen it help in my own life and lives of others. And I'm like leading group after group and seeing person after person freed. I would not be highly, 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 highly re recommending the grief recovery method. It is absolutely amazing. But like I said, if you don't want to do a class, you can't afford it, but I will make it work. But if for some reason you're like, I don't want to do that. I'm not ready. Just order the book. The book will help. And then reach out to me if you're like, yeah, I want help going through these exercises, um, then we can do that. But do not let money stop you. I want every single listener who wants help to get help. So please contact me and I would love to help you. Anyway.